Okay, now that we have the PC boards and we've loaded up some uh, circulators, let's go ahead and measure them and figure out what frequencies do they operate at, because I don't have a data sheet for either one. So we'll figure out uh, uh, what frequencies they operate at, and that'll be great. So um, I wanted to also uh, show this. I, I didn't know what, what video would be good to show it on, uh, but I was given these rulers. Everybody has seen these rulers. I think I even did a video on, on these cool rulers. I think these were originally Adafruit rulers, and everybody else has cloned them. Um, and uh, these, are, these came from PCBWay. Um, just just as a as a gift, and uh, but I've never had all of the colors. Um, I've made green PC boards, black PC boards, and red PC boards, and blue PC boards. But look at all the colors they have. I've never seen them all at, all together, right? I've never seen them in person. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at these. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, so if you think about doing a project, uh, some of the boards uh, you don't pay any extra for to get colors. So I think the red and the blue and the green are, are basically, and the black I think, are basically all the same price. But some of the other ones are a premium price. Um, uh, so uh, white's interesting. Uh, if you're building uh, circuits that have LEDs on them, sometimes you want to have a white background so you don't lose any light. Everything gets reflected. Um, uh, purple is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a purple PC board, so uh, so that one's cool. Uh, this is the normal. This is the normal green, and there's two greens. Uh, this is the normal green, and this is a flat green. It's a it's a matte a matte green. Um, so that's really interesting. I like the matte color. I think the matte colors are all premium, but yeah, uh, a matte green. Uh, and then there's two blacks. There's a regular black, the shiny black, and there's also a matte black. I really like the matte black one. It, it's pretty cool. Um, but this one, this one is my favorite of all. <laughs> I don't know what color you call this. I guess it's kind of brown. I mean, it, it's kind of in the black, black family, but it has kind of a brownish tinge to it. Um, and it's super flat uh, in, in reflectivity. It's really matte. Um, this one looks really, really high quality. <laughs> uh, just when you take a look at it, you go, oh, I've never seen a PC board like that before. Uh, the matte, the matte green one's kind of okay, but this one, this one, this one, this one is great. Um, and then there's some other ones that are just uh, yellow. I don't like yellow, but and red and red and blue. I've I've made PC boards out of red and blue before. But anyway, there you go. All the different colors you can get all in one spot. So uh, yeah, um, that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's get on with the show. Um, we have a, uh, a circulator loaded up, and we'll do this one first. Um, and, uh, I believe these, reg these, uh, circulators are going to be around 2.4 gigahertz, 2.2, 2 2.4 gigahertz, something like that. I, I don't think they'll be any higher, but they might be. Um, the, the, the piece of test equipment I have that will go higher in frequency is this, uh, the new, uh, Nano VNA V2 that I was given. This one goes to 3 gigahertz. Somebody mentioned it went to 4. Point, theirs goes to 4.4, so I need to kind of investigate that in this one. Maybe it will go higher, but it defaults to 3 gigahertz, so... Um, it might be that you can use a higher, but then it's, you know, gets really, really noisy or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I believe the chipset and it does go to 4.4. So I need to, I need to take a look at that. So anyway, let's calibrate this and sweep out the uh, circulator and, and see what it does. All right. So that viewer was right. It does go up to 4.4 gigahertz. I did not know that. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, I put it to 4.4 uh, gigahertz, but it's, it's obviously not level yet. So I have a, uh, uh, a through connector here. So let's go into the cal. Oops, not there. Let's go into cal, calibrate. Let's do the through calibration. And I'll oh, say done. And there we go. We get, a, we get a straight line now. There we go. So we're calibrated from uh, 50 kilohertz to 4 gigahertz. Great. So let's go ahead and put in our circulator. Let's see what happens. So I am going to do a trick here. I'm going to put it in backwards, what I claim to be backwards. So it's going to reject, reject things. But I'm going to do a trick that you'll like. All right. So all right. So 
Um, we can see that it's actually working sort of here and working here and uh, not really working anywhere else. So I doubt that it's 50 kilohertz. It's probably here. So let's go ahead and turn a marker on back marker, select marker one. Let's drag it over here. So yeah, so 1.5 gigahertz um, seems to be where this thing is operating. Now, why is it why is it letting things through? Why do why, why do I, shouldn't it be the rejection is here? No, I don't have the load port with anything in it. So the 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 RF is coming in and it is being diverted here to this port, but there's nothing on this port, so it sees a, a sees a reflection and it, then it, it travels along on to to, to 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 channel to channel one here. If I put in the load, then um, it does reject. So you can see there it is rejecting. So our our actual best rejection is about here. So 1.65 gigahertz is probably where this thing was designed. So it's rejecting. Uh, 26 dB at 1.6 gigahertz. And then if I remove the uh, load, uh, it will then pass everything and it's got a 0.7 dB uh, insertion loss. So that looks very, very reasonable. So um, if you if you put it up the right way around, it looks about the same. Um, you don't really lose much uh, doing this extra reflection in there. So there we go. So I know that this is uh, this is great. So it's around 1.6. So let's sweep, let's sweep one to two, one to two gigahertz. Yeah, let's do that. Oops. Uh, back, back, stimulus, start, one gigahertz. Uh, stop, two gigahertz. And yeah, there we go. So, and then let me take the load off. And, yep, very, very cool. All right, so I will jot this down um, and maybe mark, mark the, put a little label on the board so I know it's, uh, it's frequency of interest. It's about uh, 1.65 gigahertz. All right, let's take a look, look at the, uh, let's take a look at the other one. All right, this other, um, coupler will, will, I can measure it on my new fancy piece of equipment here, my uh, 8712. And uh, I recently purchased these for the, uh, for the input. So if anybody has been in the microwave industry, they know what these are and they know how much they cost. Uh, these are made by the Gore company. So Gore is the company that makes those, you know, wind, wind waterproof, wind jackets and stuff, uh, Gore-Tex, Gore right? Uh, the Gore company actually first, uh, their very, very first product, all of these things are based off of Teflon. Their very, very first product was um, uh, artificial vein and artery replacements. Um, they were, uh, they were porous, uh, a porous tube um, that could act like an artery and they were used for reconstruction in the body and then the porousness of it allowed the body to grow into it and, and make it a permanent structure. So that's how they got their start was, it was, in, uh, was in the medical industry. And then they started building jackets and then they started building um, dielectrics. They said, hey, that foam um, Teflon would be really, really good for dielectrics. You could get really, really good uh, velocity factors and stuff. And so they, made, made, they make very high end uh, coax cables. And then they went and they made super duper <laughs> coax cables. So these have like a metal, maybe it's just plastic, but, but a spiral bound around it. So these are like super heavy duty and they, they limit the bend radius. And so you don't get any return reflections and stuff like that. And these are great for, for test purposes and stuff. Uh, big strain reliefs on them. These are super, super high quality. Um, I don't know for sure what the price of these were, but I would be guessing they're somewhere between 500 and thousand dollars each. Okay, 500 to to $1,000 each for these things. They're usually good up to 18 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz or something also. Um, they're very, very, very high quality. Anyway, I saw them on eBay. I made the guy an offer. <laughs> he had three of these. I got them for 40 bucks. So three for 40 bucks. Yeah, there's a deal. There's a deal. They even say Gorn at WL Gore Company. All right, so let's go ahead and calibrate this thing over the frequency range that we're interested in. 
Uh, let me find a, a through connector here. Where's all my through connectors? Here's one. Here's another one. All right, so we will... Uh, really heavy duty uh, SMA connectors on this thing too, really. I don't know where they, who made these things, but these are super duper. All right, let's, let's put these in, tighten them down. All right, so let's see, this is reflection. We want transmission. Oh, they're already pretty flat, uh, but we'll go ahead and calibrate, calibrate. Uh, response. There we go. All right, so we are calibrated. It takes more time to put connectors on and off than it does to calibrate. Okay, and I'm gonna. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, this is the unit we're gonna test over here, and uh, I will do the same trick. We will go backwards. And then we can just remove the load and see our response. The load is on there right now. So we're going to be looking at the rejection. So let's, uh, let's put this on. There we go. And we are getting a rejection. We're getting a dip. Uh, let's do marker search minimum. There it is. It, 847.5 megahertz. So this one operates at, at 800 megahertz. That's very cool. Um, and let's uh, see if we can get everything. Uh, I can't really get everything in, in, in picture here, but yeah, there we go. And then if I take off the load, we will then see the uh, transmission. And yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty flat out here. So it's going to operate over a larger range than the other one. Let's... Uh, Let's take a look at here and the marker. If we say that we a 20 dB is good enough, then we can operate this thing from 825 to 875. Uh, yeah, very cool. So, so there you go. Uh, we have taken some, quote, junk parts. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, some surplus parts and uh, made PC boards for them and turned them into something useful. Uh, we've measured them. And uh, I have, uh, have a few of these now, 800 megahertz. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some actual stuff at 800 megahertz and uh, see what we can do there. Anyway, thanks for watching.